they're not gonna see that. It's fine about that score, but they're gonna see it if you apply through QuestBridge. Hey you guys, and welcome or welcome back to my YouTube channel. My name is Naja, and I make college or lifestyle related content. This video will be about the QuestBridge application or the QuestBridge process. So if you're unfamiliar with QuestBridge, it is a platform that connects low income, high achieving students to resources and tools to make applying to college easier and less stressful and just more affordable overall for your family. So to start off, I'm gonna walk you guys through the QuestBridge website just to make sure you're familiar with what it has to offer and then I'll talk about my experience and the benefits of applying through QuestBridge. So this is the QuestBridge website. This is what you see when you type in questbridge.org and it basically just tells you everything you need to know right here, what QuestBridge is, some little stories about uh, QuestBridge scholars. There are 40 college partners overall. And if you click on college partners at the top, you can see all the partners. So this is all of them. Basically what they want to do is connect low income, high achieving students to top tier institutions that they may not regularly have access to. So all of their colleges are really good. They have most of the T20 schools, Ivy Leagues, and just really good um, colleges and universities that you can apply to. So then the other tabs they have are for high school students, which is the National College Match, the College Prep Scholars Program, the Quest for Excellence Awards and a Student Resource Center, and then educators, scholars, after you apply through QuestBridge, you become a QuestBridge scholar and there's a whole network. Then they have the About page. So I have a summary about everything I know about QuestBridge, but this is where you'll get the real full details and just you can go more in depth on the website after watching this video. Okay, so like I said, QuestBridge has 40 college partners, so I'm going to try to walk you through the process as best as possible. But it is pretty complicated like when I was going through it I was so confused at first when I was learning about it and then I was confused telling my parents about it and they were confused and it was just a whole lot but QuestBridge made it easy for us to understand eventually when they like they had online seminars and videos and all this stuff that would walk us through it so that's how I learned about the process and that's how you guys will probably learn about the process if this video doesn't make sense so first they have two main programs which is the college prep scholar program and the QuestBridge national college match so to start off the college prep scholar program is a program for juniors specifically so you apply during your junior year in March there's a March deadline so it's kind of towards the end of your junior year and basically it provides resources and knowledge to prepare you for the application process in your senior year. So it's also a notable distinction that you can put in the awards section of like your common app or any other application that you use. And then there's other benefits to the College Prep Scholar program. So if you become a CPS, you have a better chance of becoming a finalist in the National College Match, which I'll talk about in a minute. So another benefit is that you can earn various awards if you are selected as a CPS. And this includes full scholarships to summer programs, a Quest for Excellence Award, an invitation to a QuestBridge National College Admissions Conference, personalized feedback on your college essays, and campus visits to QB partners. So when I applied to be a CPS, I also applied for a full scholarship to this Emory Summer Program, which unfortunately I was not awarded, but I was awarded an invitation to the QuestBridge National College Admissions Conference, which mine was held at Rice, and then there were also some at, I think, Yale and at Stanford the year that I applied. Unfortunately, I didn't get to go to mine because it was far in Texas and I didn't really have the money to go out there, but I did uh, participate in the virtual one that they offered to others. Okay, so the next thing that you can get, like I said before, is a Quest for Excellence Award. So Quest for Excellence Awards are awards that you can apply to in specific um, topics, basically. So you can apply to a humanities, a STEM, a New York one, a regional one, and it basically can provide you with a laptop stipend, online courses, test preparation, test registration fees or just things like that so it's just another award that you can get through CPS. It also gives you a head start on the application to participate in the national college match because that same application that will use some of those essays and some of those questions on your national college match application so by becoming a CPS you're getting a head start on your national college match. It is very possible to still participate in the national college match if you were not a college prep scholar so college prep scholar is just something extra you don't have to be a CPS to participate in the national college match or to be a QuestBridge finalist it's just something extra you can do in your junior year that will provide even more resources and more help to you that'll prepare you for your senior year and applying to college okay so I was a CPS in my junior year and I found it to be really helpful because it gave us kind of like an outline of what to expect when we we're applying to college and it connected me to a lot of other high achieving students who are in the same position as me 
and there was like a Facebook group and we could all talk about like our concerns and questions we had and just anything else. The next thing I'm going to talk about is becoming a QuestBridge finalist and participating or not participating in the national college match. So, of course, like I said, you have a better chance of becoming a finalist if you are a college prep scholar, and this is not just me saying that, they actually put that on their website. So, QuestBridge finalist is a status that you apply for in your senior year of high school. It is the first step to applying to the National College Match. The National College Match Scholarship Program, the full ride program offered by QuestBridge, which is what everybody basically is striving for, if they are participating in QuestBridge because they want a full ride to one of the college partners. In September, you apply to become a QuestBridge finalist and that is very early. I said September of your senior year, that's like the second month of school for some people, maybe the first. And so you have to really be on top of this application because it is, for one, very long. And it's extremely important that this application is something that you are proud of because this is the application that your colleges will later see. So you are applying to QuestBridge right now, but later on they're going to pass this application on to the colleges that you say you want them to send it to and that this is what the colleges are going to see. So you want to make sure you have the best possible application that you're submitting to QuestBridge. Okay, so after you apply in September to be a finalist, you will find out in October if they have chosen you to become a finalist or not. Another thing that you will do in October is rank up to 12 college partners. So if you are familiar with the national college match process, basically it is a full ride to one of the QuestBridge partners, but there are a lot of stipulations involved with applying to college this way. So to start off, you have up to 12 colleges that you can apply to. So out of the 40 partners, you have to choose 12 or choose at least one that you want to rank on this ranking form. So you can rank one school, you can rank four schools, you can rank 12 schools. However, the order in which you rank it must be the preference in which you would want to attend. You can rank however many schools you want, minimum of one, maximum of 12. All of the college partners except for four are binding. This means if you rank one of the binding colleges on your list and they accept you, you're going to have to attend. You're legally bound to attend that school with the scholarship that they give you. So you can't rank Brown or USC and then match with them and not and decide oh I don't want to go there you have to go you're legally bound to attending so that's one of the main stipulations is that you're bound to attend that school so it's a binding contract for all but four schools so the four schools that aren't binding are MIT Stanford Princeton and Yale. This is basically like you're applying early decision to up to 12 schools all with one application and your ranks should be in order of preference so for example if if you rank Brown Vanderbilt and Yale, Brown number one, Vanderbilt number two, and Yale number three, and Brown accepts you, you must go to Brown. If Brown doesn't accept you and Vanderbilt does, you have to go to Vanderbilt. But if Brown and Vanderbilt accept you, Brown, you're going to have to go to Brown because that was higher on your list in order of preference. So make sure when you're making this list, you know exactly where you want to attend. Make sure you really want to go to the school before you rank it on your list because I know people who ended up at schools that they really, they ranked 12th, but that was the only school to accept them. And they were like, oh, I don't really want to go there, but they're bound to that school now. So be sure that you want to attend that school. So this is why I only ranked four schools because I was so frightened of this binding contract. I was like, oh my gosh, I don't want to take that chance right now. I want to apply to all of these colleges and get my results and be able to make a choice on where I want to attend. So I ranked Stanford, Yale, Princeton, and then Columbia. And Columbia was the only binding school I had on um, the application. And I knew these were all reach schools, so I, of course, was just taking a chance and seeing, like, what could come out of QuestBridge, basically. But I was very, very hesitant about ranking other schools. Even though I wanted to apply to, like, Emory and USC and stuff, I was just so scared to be bound to a school. I wanted to have options and be able to make my own decisions when it came down to it. If you are matched to a non-binding school, you can decide whether or not you'd like to go there. So you can say, no, I don't want the QuestBridge uh, scholarship and I don't want to attend this school right now. But if you're matched to a binding school, you have to withdraw all your other applications. And when applying through QuestBridge, through the QuestBridge National College Match, another stipulation is that you can only apply early to state schools or schools that require applications to be eligible for scholarships. When I was applying to the National College Match, I only applied to UGA. All of my other schools were regular decision because I knew that I couldn't apply early to these other schools, otherwise I would jeopardize my contract in the national college match. Okay, so I was not matched to any of the schools on my ranking. So I was not matched to Stanford, Yale, Princeton, 
or Columbia, which means I did not gain acceptance through the National College match and I did not receive the scholarship. However, when you're applying through QuestBridge and if you go through the National College match, you have an opportunity after that to move all of your applications and add more applications to the QuestBridge regular decision process. Some students skipped the National College match and when they got their finalist status, they plan to apply straight in regular decision and that's also an option. So you can either go through the National College match or you can just apply through QuestBridge regular decision. I decided to go through the National College match, but I didn't match so I could move all of my applications to the regular decision round. Okay, so I applied to 12 schools in the regular decision round, which included Stanford, Yale, Princeton, Columbia, Emory, Pomona, Duke, Rice, Notre Dame, and U Chicago, USC, and Dartmouth. Out of the 12 schools, I was accepted to four, which were Stanford, Emory, Notre Dame, and USC. And then I was waitlisted at three other schools, which was U Chicago, Rice, and Columbia, and then rejected from all the rest. So as you can see, I did not get into every school I applied to through QuestBridge, nor did I get rejected from every school I applied to. There were people who didn't get into any QuestBridge schools and people who got into every QuestBridge school. It's just a, a chance that you have to take when you're applying through QuestBridge. As you can see, I got into Stanford through QuestBridge regular decision. This means I did not receive that full scholarship that they offered through the National College match. However, once you go through QuestBridge regular decision, although you are not eligible for the National College Match Scholarship anymore, you should still get a very good financial aid package from these top tier institutions because most QuestBridge schools meet demonstrated need. They'll cover the cost of whatever you can't afford basically. And you should still get a very, very good financial aid package that's similar to what you would have received in the National College Match. Also, when you're applying to these schools through the National College Match or through QuestBridge Regular Decision, the QuestBridge application must be aided by the supplements and a very extensive financial aid application. So supplements, of course, are just extra extra essays that your colleges may ask you, like specifically, why do you want to go here and what do you want to do here and what kind of impact do you want to have on the community and just extra stuff like that. So for some schools, they ask you to submit the Common App in addition to the QuestBridge application that has your supplement in it. Some schools say just submit the supplement, don't submit the Common App. And some schools say just submit your QuestBridge application, we don't want any of these other stuff. Which was like Pomona, for example, only wanted the QuestBridge application, there was no supplement and no Common App attached to it. But Stanford required the QuestBridge application and the supplement. And then this financial aid application. So this is the hardest part, honestly, Applying for financial aid is like the most complicated thing in the college process just because you have to fill out so many things besides the FAFSA. So aside from FAFSA, you have to fill out a thing called the CSS profile, which is a financial application ran by the college board. So the CSS profile is a more extensive version of your FAFSA and includes a lot more other information such as like your car and just your household and all this information. And then, besides the FAFSA and the CSS profile, colleges will ask for, for specific documents to support all this information that you told them. So you will use this program called iDoc to submit all of your tax forms and supplemental financial aid information and just all of this crazy stuff. But QuestBridge will make sure you know what you need to do for your financial aid and they will walk you through every step of this crazy stressful process. So. I got through it so y'all be able to get through it. Hopefully you guys will take advantage of all of the stuff QuestBridge has to offer and just make sure you understand what you're filling out and what you're actually submitting because you're going to have to do it again the next year. Now that I kind of walked through that complicated process, now we can talk about the benefits, in my opinion, of applying through QuestBridge. So the biggest benefit to me was applying to all of these schools for free. So with the QuestBridge application, you do not pay any fees to send this application to the colleges. You don't pay to send it to QuestBridge. You don't pay to send it to the colleges that you rank or the colleges that you apply to in the QuestBridge regular decision round. So that was just the most beneficial thing to me because those costs would have added up so much on top of SAT scores and ACT scores and AP scores. So that being free just helped me out a lot. So the next benefit is that you are connected to so many different resources such as like organizers, video tutorials, admission conferences, Facebook groups, just people that you can connect with and talk to and ask questions. And it's just very 
supportive so you have a whole support group behind you as you're going through this stressful process and complicated process so that was also something that really i i really cared about and was really helpful to me and then another benefit is that you it allows you to apply early decision to up to 12 different schools if that if that's what interests you because you know when you apply early decision or if you apply restrictive early action you only apply to that one school early decision or restrictive early so being able to apply to 12 of those is just a unique opportunity that some people may like may or may not like and they're some of the top schools in the nation so they allow you to rank all these schools you can rank these ivies and rank these t20 schools and be able to apply to all of them early and it's just a good opportunity and then you can also get a full scholarship to one of their college partners that goes without saying like that's one of the big benefits is that you'll get a full ride to one of the schools if you become a college national college match the last benefit is that you stand out against other applicants so questbridge says it really has no weight but i think it shows that through your questbridge application and just being a questbridge finalist in general it shows that you overcame a lot of hardships but you were still able to be a very successful high achieving student so i think that's that's something that's very important about QuestBridge is that it makes attending and affording school possible for people who may not have thought they could attend these top tier schools just because they can't afford it or because they think they weren't good enough for it. But QuestBridge is helping them see that they are good enough and they're overqualified to attend these schools. So, all right, now I'm going to talk about the stats of a QuestBridge finalist. So these are the stats from last year. My class of QuestBridge finalists, these are the stats that I'm about to read to you. So the median SAT was a 1320 through a 1450. The ACT was a 28 to 32. The median income was 35,000 a year. 86% were ranked in the top 10% of their class, 73% were first generation students, and the average unweighted GPA was a 3.9, and the acceptance rate was 40% for QuestBridge finalists. So 60% of applicants were not chosen, but 40% were chosen to become finalists. And it's specifically for low income students earning less than $65,000 a year for a family of four with minimal assets. However, I know people who made more than that, but they had more family members or they had different circumstances. So that's not a cutoff. It's just a suggestion that you should be below or around that um, median income. But definitely just apply and take that chance if you're low income. They'll, they'll ask you to go in detail about your family and your kind of situation. So don't be afraid by that number. It's just, it's just a median number. In late summer 2019, the application will open for anybody who wants to become a QuestBridge finalist and participate in the National College Match. And I encourage you guys to start early if you are going to apply. Make sure you look into it. Make sure you understand everything about this QuestBridge process before you put yourself in this position. Make sure you know what you're getting into. So make sure you research QuestBridge and look at every possible resource you can look at before applying to this program because it's just nice to know what you're getting into before you get into it. I know a lot of people who are regretting applying through QuestBridge because they didn't get the results they wanted, but just make sure you know like what exactly is about to happen, like you know when it's when stuff is due and what colleges are going to see. So the QuestBridge application was so detailed. I had to put every test score ever, which I was totally not expecting to do when I was first applying to college I was like oh they're not gonna see that it's fine about that score but they gonna see it if you apply through QuestBridge. Writing is heavily involved in this QuestBridge application there's so many essays and stuff check out my other video if you haven't already I talk about how I got into Stanford and I talk about the 20 schools I applied to and how and tips in that other video so thank you guys so much for watching hopefully this provided some kind of insight on the QuestBridge process I know it was kind of complicated but I'll make it as simple as possible when I'm editing it so good luck I am a QuestBridge scholar I'm in the QuestBridge scholars network now I will be attending Stanford University as a QuestBridge scholar and it was just very helpful to me when I was applying to college so hopefully this can be that same thing for you guys if you decide you want to apply through QuestBridge and I thank you so much for watching this video like and subscribe to see more content and I'll see you guys next time